Let's consider some properties of definite integrals. So first, if f is a function that is continuous on the closed interval a, b, or it has only a finite number of jump discontinuities, then we are guaranteed that the definite integral from a to b of f by x dx exists. Further basic properties of these definite integrals are these. So for example, if we have the endpoints be the same, so we integrate from a to a of f of x dx, that means that in the definition, the Riemann sums, the delta x is zero. Therefore, even in the limit, we get zero. The second property expresses the fact that if we flip the endpoints, so we integrate from b to a instead of a to b, we get an overall minus sign and that uh, comes from the fact that in the definition with the Riemann sums the delta x picks up an overall minus sign hence even in the limit we get that minus sign. If we introduce a point between a and b called c then we can say that the definite integral from a to c plus the definite integral from c to b is equal to the definite integral from a all the way to b. Now uh, this just expresses a simple fact that uh, areas are additive but you could also view it as the sum law of limits in action. The last uh, property expresses the fact that when we take a constant times f of x and its definite integral from a to b, then we obtain that constant times the definite integral of f, f of x from a to b. And that is again expressing the fact that um, f is being uh, stretched by a factor of c along the y-axis, so the values of the function a factor of c on the y-axis and then that scales the areas by a factor of c or, or you could view it as the constant multiple law of limits in action. Further properties are as follows. If f of x is non-negative greater than or equal to zero along this closed interval then its definite integral along this interval is also non-negative. Um, this expresses the fact that uh, the graph of the function is at on or above the x-axis, therefore the area under the graph of the function is a positive area. Uh, if f of x is greater than or equal to another function g of x from on this uh, closed interval, then the definite integral from a to b of f of x is greater than or equal to the definite integral from a to b of g of x. Again, this expresses the simple fact that uh, if the graph of the function f is at the same height or above uh, the, the graph of the function g, then the signed areas underneath these graphs uh, are related in the same way. Um, last, we can say that if f of x is between some minimum and maximum values little m and capital M along this closed interval, then the definite integral of f of x from a to b is greater than or equal to little m times b minus a and less than or equal to uh, capital M times b minus a. Again, this expresses a simple fact that the region, that is uh, the region under the graph of the function, is enclosed between, um, is between two um, rectangles. The graph of the function is between two rectangles. Um, one, is, ha one has the base b minus a and height little m, and the other has the same base b minus a, but it has the height capital M. Okay, let's solve some problems using these basic properties. Determine the sign of the following definite integral. So pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and have selected the option that says positive. So indeed, the definite integral that you see has a positive value. And this is because the function that we are integrating is positive over this uh, interval from uh, two to four. Let's look at the next question. Um, so determine the sign of this definite integral. Pause the video and select your answer now. Hope you paused it and I've selected negative in this case. So even though the function is taking on positive values over the interval from zero to three, but we are flipping the endpoints of the interval. And so we integrate from three to zero that introduces an overall minus sign. That's why the integral is negative. Next question, determine the sign of this uh, definite integral. So pause the video and select your answer now. Okay, this one is zero. And this is because the function that we are integrating is an odd function whatever values it's taking uh, from on the interval from zero to one, it's taking the same values, but with a minus sign on the interval from negative one to zero. And those values cancel each other out and therefore we get zero for this integral. Last, consider this uh, definitive integral and uh, select uh, the sign that you think it has now. Okay, I hope you paused it and I've selected zero for the sign of this 
um, definite integral, what you could do is take the second integral and introduce the new variable that is u equals x plus pi over 2 in that one, only in the second integral. So that introduces, uh, instead of the um, integral that you see there, the integral from uh, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, because as x changes from negative pi to 0, u changes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, then it's the sign of um, x, which in terms of u can be written as u minus pi over 2 uh, du. And this uh, function, the sine function, being shifted to um, the right by pi over 2, produces negative cosine of u. And therefore, we find the same integral that uh, is in the first term, but with a minus sign. Therefore, the sum must be 0. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.